I think it also rounds down from what I can remember. What I can't remember is what this religion that I've ended up acquiring off Darius is any good at. I remember the last time I checked it wasn't very good. Let's have a look. Cheap missionaries, pointless, um, follower, specialist, bloody... Yes, that is absolutely awful. Protestantism would be nice because I'd be able to buy cathedrals, which is a nice building. He's, pretty much any religion can build a building um, of some use, apart from the religion we're in. Excellent. <laughs> of course the guy next to us has the rubbish religion. He's doing a hell of a lot of trading with us. You can check though, we're getting 7 gold and 6 science off him. That's pretty good. Uh, just, out of uh, just for sake of knowledge purposes, what's the best route available? A caravan from... Uh, no, that's important. A caravan from Lisbon to Persopolis. Persepolis. Persepolis. One of those is the correct pronunciation. Either way, I can earn 13.5 gold from that. Into Athens, 12.5. And, and I'll get more science off them than vice versa. Assuming that we are behind technologically, or at the very least we've researched techs that are more resource and labour intensive than they have. I mean, if we look at the tech tree at the start of next turn, oh, I think Porto went up a population point. Um, so I'll quickly edit that before I forget. Uh, it's gone in the workshop. No, we don't want to do that right now. What was I going to do? Oh, no, I've forgotten. Um, yeah, if we go on the tech tree, we still don't have optics, so obviously our tech tree is a bit biased, because optics only takes four turns. The compass only takes 17. This part of the tech tree is really quite light at the start, obviously as it moves on. The uh, amount of science goes back to the same as the rest. Um, what trade routes have we got going? We've got Lisbon to Athens, we've got Lisbon to Funchal, we've got Lisbon to Panama. What we want to do is go to Lisbon with that, and then go to Persepolis, the capital of Darius's lot. Because financially that's the best option for us. Um, I'm going to go over here and try and speed getting these roads ready. Because... Obviously the roads themselves cost maintenance, and while they're not connecting anything up, they're just a waste of money. Um, being Portugal, i.e. an empire that is all about its money, it's very, very important to try and rack up as much money as you can. So you can build units with cash, you can build buildings with cash, building settlers with cash. You know, very important. You can't build wonders with cash. And I believe you can't build archaeologists later in the game with cash either. Um, where did we say we wanted to build a city around here? One, two, three, four, was it here? Oh god, I can't really remember. Or was it there? Might have been there. In which case we don't want to build our road there because that would be a waste. Right, we want to send that there and get the maximum amount of money out of him. Do be do do be do do. Ba ba da 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 do 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 do. Ba ba da do ba da do. So that was probably horribly out of tune, but I quite like this song as well. I'm not going to bang on too much about the soundtrack, but I do like a lot of the songs in there, and I've probably said that three or four times already in this LP. It's just one of the key differences. Civ Four music was very catchy, but not very good. Civ 5 music, not really very catchy, but much better technically. Obviously that's a biased opinion. And that's what it is, an opinion, so don't bark at me if you disagree. <laughs> but that's honestly what I believe. It's one major difference I've found between YouTube and... I joined Reddit maybe a month and a half ago. I'd never used it before, I didn't actually know very much about it. But people on Reddit tend to be a bit more friendly than people on YouTube, but they don't have a sense of humour. And I, well, I don't want to generalise too much. 
the bits I have seen, they don't really have much of a sense of humour. And as a guy that likes to try and come across with a bit of, not panache per se, but a bit of flair, because life can be a bit dull and you've got to spice it up somehow, um, I found quite often that my jokes were falling flat on their face. Yet ironically, a post which I thought might be a bit ropey on the verging of marketing, I wasn't doing it on purpose, I was just, um, I was actually asking people there what they wanted me to talk about in God, uh, not Gods and Kings, in Brave New World specifically that's new. So that I didn't just waffle and waste everybody's time. Um, as it happens, that thread got a lot of support, and that's why the first video in this series has so many views in comparison to the rest, but... Yeah, if you try and track it, track, yeah, try and crack a joke, most of the time, it doesn't work for you. Not a very good idea. He's at war again? Really? I think I might have accidentally solved Hiawatha with death, giving eye into uh, Monty. Sorry! My bad! Lisbon! Why did the aqueduct not work? Was it the same turn that the aqueduct was built perhaps? I don't know. Either way, what town do we want to work? Do we want to get more product, uh, more population? Yeah, we probably do. There's almost no downside to having a high population. And this is not a map where we're going to have a very small amount of cities, obviously. You can see how many we've got already. So, our social policy acquirement, or, you know, the ability to gain social policies will naturally be quite slow. It's still going to take us 30 turns to get the next social policy. Speaking of which... We could go down Aesthetics because the cultural women would get them more often, but... We might end up in the Renaissance era by the time... Um, let's have a look. Yeah, we'll probably end up in the Renaissance era before... Oops. Before we get the next social policy, and as a result, we could get rationalism, which will help our science situation out nicely. There's never a situation in civilization games where making lots of science is a bad thing, because you need science for every victory condition without fail. Apart from time, I suppose, because science only is one of the measurements of points. But obviously, if you want to win a science victory, you need the science. If you want to win diplomatically, I suppose that's then the least of the rest necessary for the science, but. Um, there are a lot of texts late in the game which really help you either get more votes or you want to fill the patronage t uh, tree in, blah de blah de blah. Basically, what I'm trying to tell you is there's really not an op not a yeah, there's really not a situation where it is bad um, to have lots of science and to be in the tech lead is almost always an advantage. It does mean that people will try and steal techs off you which can damage relationships. It does also mean that AI will generally frown upon you. There used to be a condition in this game, like a Diplo situation, where the AI would hate you as soon as you got close to winning the game. Which is very bizarre on many levels. Not only is it kind of fourth wall breaking, but it's oddly specific in a game where we're trying to Almost, we're not role playing per se, and um, I'm not a role player as such, but it's the type of game where if you wanted to do that, you really could get immersed in it. You could really pretend you were Maria of Portugal, and I could put on a terrible monarch voice and offend pretty much everybody watching the videos. I'm not going to do that, guys. But um, that would be something that people could do. And I bet there's an LP out there that is doing an LP of Civilization V in a terrible voice of a posh monarch. I'm not going to go out there and have a look because, frankly, even though I might not be doing a lot my, with my time right now, I'm not that desperate. <laughs> but um, I bet somebody's doing something weird like that. The garden is a building which means you're great people um, are produced much more quickly. If you are Indonesia, I believe your unique building is a replacement for the garden, and it gives faith. So not a particularly brilliant unique building. <laughs> it is quite an important empire to get the hanging gardens with, though, if you don't happen to be in a situation where you can build a um, garden. 
that's one way of getting around um, not being able to build a garden is if you get the hanging gardens because it doesn't matter if you don't fill the prerequisite conditions because you'll be allowed to anyway bizarre I know but that's the way the cookie crumbles in these games you want to make use of what you can I presume Darius is going to send a missionary off to Panama to try and convert it more quickly. He won't dare... Oh, he says that's a newish city of Argos. Darius won't dare send his missionaries into and spread in Greece because Greece has a religion. And usually the AI dodges spreading in cities um, of a religion where the owner has a religion of their own. Which is why it's the neutral battleground, which can always be so important. Now I feel I've improved all the tiles I need. How many workers have we got? One, two, three, four, five. Right, I definitely don't want to get rid of one. It's just there's no use for it at this point in time. So we're going to put it in a city and protect it. Tile maintenance costs money, so you don't want to have to literally improve every tile you have if you're not going to use them. For example, um, thank you for that. For example, if you look at Braga, to the northwest of Braga, there is a downright terrible desert tile. And I will never improve that unless the AI does it by accident. Um, Hiawatha lost another city, didn't he? He needs to stop being rubbish. Because at this rate, it's just going to feed Montezuma a load of cities. And that would not be good, because Monty is ludicrously aggressive. I think Attila the Hun is designed to be more aggressive than Monty. Don't quote me on that. But generally speaking, I don't find that. But he does have wine for trade, so we will definitely do that for the extra happiness. We're actually not too far away from a golden age. We're 402 points off. It'll still take us a while yet, but... Nonetheless, that's quite handy. And how on earth is she losing money with a capital like that? Wine has been connected to Samarkand, so they now like us. And they're going to give us happiness until they no longer like us. Um, I don't have the most culture, everybody. Let me check who does. I'm guessing it's Persia. Let's have a look. 9553. And let's pretend we're Persia. We're not that far behind Persia, actually, compared to what I thought. But Persia is definitely in the culture lead. You can see by how his cities are expanding so much compared to everybody else. Because you need culture to acquire new tiles without paying for them. You can buy tiles and... Buying tiles is very handy sometimes, but if you can get them through culture for free, obviously that is better. Does Quebec want a road? Nope. Why do they want the Angkor Wat? It's one of the few wonders in this game I will really, really not build unless I have to. It's not a good wonder. What is a good wonder, however, is the Sistine Chapel. It's a nice wonder. I'm surprised you don't get a free great work of art with it though. I suppose if you did it would be OP, but I'm, su I'm surprised considering what it is. And that was some weird frame drop right there. Well, it shouldn't have dropped frames because it was still about 30 FPS, but... Nevertheless, there was a distinct dropping flame flames frames there. Hmm, strange. Anyway, let's continue. We're on our way to acoustics, a very important uh, technology. It's also important if you're Brazil, because your Brazil wood camp gets a yield increase. Yep, go to Panama. The, op the only option. I wonder where I'm going to go. 